All right, hello. So I have spent the last 17 years in academia, and so I'm very well versed in the worldview, language, and culture of our research field. And I feel like my time in DC for a year as an American Psychological Association Congressional Fellow is kind of like doing a study abroad, where you get immersed in the language, culture, and worldview of another place. You know a lot more than you did before you went there, but I'm not a native speaker. And so I just say that humbly that as if I spent more time there, my views and perspective will have continued to evolve. Um, but I want to say I met wonderful people and it's a magical place. So here are a few things that I want to highlight from my experience with you. And I'm going to start with some general ex things for everyone. And then given the amount of researchers in the audience, I have some specific thoughts for other researchers and academics. So first and foremost, like if you leave here with nothing else, I want you to realize how much your voice matters. Your story, your lived experience, and your time and energy and sharing it with policymakers is literally so helpful to us at every single stage of the legislative process. So I worked for Senator Bob Casey of Pennsylvania. You see him at the podium there. And in our office, every call or email you took the time to do is logged and reported to us weekly in all staff meetings. Also, we would, policymakers in our office, we would continue to reach out to you to get your perspective because you give us the ideas for what type of legislation is needed to solve real world problems that people are experiencing. We also reach out to get your perspective, either professional or personal, based on what might be the potential benefits and drawbacks of a strategy we are thinking about proposing to contribute to solving a problem. We also need your voice in the advocacy. You taking the time to call your elected official or email them lets us know what policies matter to you, and we need you to do that to become sponsors on legislation and indicate to your representatives what you want them to vote on. And then your sustained advocacy, because nothing's simple or quick here. Timing is everything. We just had some wonderful things passed that took us 10 years to do, but your sustained advocacy really, really matters. Also, I have never been in, in my life, been in a place where so many different viewpoints were listened to. And I'm a psychologist. I got to hear so many people whose lives are different from mine and their stories. But we systematically, when we we're looking at legislation and putting it out there, we would get so many diverse perspectives because that helped us craft the best piece of legislation that will work for the most people. And I know when people think of DC, they think of, oh, like it's like a binary. You either vote yes or no, or you're on the red team, or you're on the blue team. But really, all the reasons behind a yes or a no, or the diversity within the teams is so great. And so I just thought it was such a wonderful lesson to experience that, that we all should continue with. I also really had the privilege to be able to work on this hearing on inclusive emergency management for people with disabilities and older adults. And I had the privilege of talking with local, state, and federal officials doing great work in trying to improve inclusive emergency management. But we also got the perspectives of people with lived experience, people with disabilities and their family members who are continuing to say how there's so many gaps in the system. And so having everybody's voice at the table will help us truly make things better for all citizens. And so given who we, we want everybody at the table, our communication choices really reflect who we want at the table. And also one of the takeaways from this experience is that working on the Senate Special Committee on Aging, I have never been in an office environment where accessible communication was put at the forefront so, so much. So it was the first time in my life I had Braille on my business card so that everybody could have my contact information. We also had American Sign Language interpretation at every single hearing, every event. We had closed captioning for every meeting so that everybody can access the information. 
We also had staff that worked diligently on making sure that our websites of the federal government were accessible for people who use assistive technology and they could engage in that. And the federal government honestly does better than the private sector on this. And so one of the things that I want us to leave here thinking about, these were blind spots for myself before I went there, but I think all of us can continue to think about how we communicate and who that invites to the table when we're making decisions. So now I'm gonna switch to the researchers in the room. I have like five points that I could say for this, but I'm gonna say two and you can ask me about the other ones later. So, we were trained as a fellow to be legislative assistants, and so we have a broad portfolio of issues that we cover. And one of the ways that we <laughs> used science was if it was covered in the news, because we, our jobs were to scan local, national, and world headlines every day to see what kind of problems were in front of our constituents and how to solve things. And so, it, it's great if you get your article published in a high, wonderful impact journal. That's a good start, but it's not the end of the process if you want it to be used by policymakers. Taking the time to have a press release and get some media coverage, I was able to get information on children exposed to disasters and to the senator because it was covered in a Washington Post article. Um, and so that is critical. Also, taking the time to create the one-pager summaries that are clear and concise messages really helped. Second, I just was constantly looking for program evaluation data. As the, in Congress, we're the holders of the funding. We, we hold the purse strings, and so we're looking to, for what grant programs to fund, and we want to make the best use of your tax dollars and finding what is evidence-based and what works for most people is critical. So all of you doing program evaluation research, continue to do it and elevate it. Get it published, get it out there. So given that, that has changed my approach to research. I have new ideas based on that inclusive emergency management um, hearing about areas I want to go into. I also want to make sure that I take the time to engage in science communication after publishing the article, making sure we make one-pagers, reaching out to our policy officials and, and sharing that with them so that they can be abreast of the best science. And just renewed energy on program evaluation. So, with that said, I want to say that DC is a magical place with a lot of wonderful people and opportunities. And one of my dreams going there was to meet Cory Booker. Waited the whole year. And finally, my chief of staff, it was the last week before Senate was out for session, she made it happen. So, yeah. <laughs>